Hello and welcome everybody to another puzzle challenge video from chessuniversity.com. This is Ryan Murphy and today we're moving on to our advanced puzzles for the week. So a target audience here are players around 2000 or just under and uh, it's white to play and win. The position before you comes from chess.com and the players were Tian and Cordova. Cordova is a grandmaster. Tian on the site has a rating of over 2200 so both very strong players. And uh, this is already about to be the 20th move of this game. Um, before I dive into sort of the quick recap of the opening and early middle game stage of this game, um, I'll invite you guys to check out the link in the description of this video where you can go to the official post on chessuniversity.com. If you post what you think the answer is to this puzzle there, uh, you can get rewards uh, unlocked on your account. You get reward points, I think they're called star points. Uh, which you can then use in the future to purchase videos and other things from the website. So I hope you guys will check that out, and we'll put the solution post up tomorrow, about 24 hours after this puzzle challenge is released on YouTube and on the website. So hopefully you guys will check out the uh, chessuniversity.com. But uh, without further ado, let's dive into the game. All right, this one began as a D4 opening. Looks like a invitation to a Catalan if black plays d5 instead black goes for uh, a Benoni and plays the move c5 or invites a Benoni and white takes up the gauntlet by playing d5 um, there are other options here of course you can play knight f3 you can be a chicken and not go into the Benoni uh, you, yeah but basically if you want to fight for an opening advantage and make the game interesting d5 is the way to go so takes takes d6, knight c3, and as far as modern Bononis go, the Fiend Keto variation is not one of the more scary variations from the black perspective, so it does definitely make a lot of sense uh, that black has opted for this variation. g6, knight to f3, bishop to g7, bishop d2, castle, castle, rook e8. This is all still very common theory. Um, and here bishop f4 is one of the most popular moves, if not the most popular move. And uh, it's my understanding that here black has a pretty decent choice uh, variations. I think a6 is an idea, uh, specifically on this move to play for this b5 idea. Uh, there's the move played in the game, which is knight a6, which has uh, many times ideas of both knight b4 under certain circumstances, and also this other idea of knight c7 to prepare b5. It's a very typical Benoni idea. Uh, in this position, there's also a well-known move knight to e4, I believe. Pretty sure it works in this move order. Um, and then if knight d2, there's this exchange sack on f4. And then you take on b2, drop the bishop back, and you later will expand this very nice majority of three against one on the queen side uh, for counterplay. And this is also a pretty decent variation for black, but there's, there's lots of ways for black to play. Anyway, knight a6, knight to d2, and knight to h5, challenging this bishop on f4, which puts pressure on pretty much the weakest point in black's position, which is the d6 pawn. Bishop drops back to e3. Here, bishop d7 is played. It's almost extremely tempting to take on e3 here, but I think it's a bit premature. If black gets some more pieces out first, then it could be quite interesting, and even here, probably black has decent compensation. Maybe not full, but um, there's always a, an idea to look out for in these positions, because it weakens a lot of squares near the king. It's sort of a long-term positional sacrifice. Um, not saying this is anywhere near the best move, but it's just an option to, to keep in mind if you play these types of positions. Anyway, bishop d7, a4. I should point out that uh, black is intending to play b5 if white doesn't stop them, so that's why a4 is played. Knight to b4 now, that the b4 square is irreparably weakened. Uh, notice that this pawn cannot go backwards, so this knight's very safe here. Can never be kicked away. And now white plunges the knight to c4, which is often the best square for this piece because it puts pressure on this weakness that I highlighted just a moment ago. So here, black goes queen c7 to protect the pawn. Bishop to f3, challenging this knight on the rim, trying to potentially threaten to weaken the black pawn structure by bishop takes knight. And black would have to take back with a pawn and double their h pawns and leave their king a little bit open. So black retreats the knight, which is very logical. Bishop to f4, maximizing pressure against d6. Bishop f8 is pretty much forced to guard the pawn. And now white goes ahead with a very standard idea, and this is in fact the white main strategic plan, uh, which is to play e4, e5. 
and break through in the center. That's where white has more space and more pawns. So e4 is played. a6, trying to organize counterplay with b5. This is a typical idea in the Benoni. That's where black has more pawns. That's where they're supposed to play. Uh, white goes rook e1, just getting ready to punch through e5. It was maybe possible to play e5 directly, but in a blitz game, you want to make sure everything's in the game before you uh, start taking concrete action. So rook e1 is a very easy move to play. And rook 88 which unfortunately does not deal with the threat of e5, and after e5 already, uh, white's doing very well. If we back up here, it's already a very difficult situation for black. Black has to basically strive for immediate counterplay, otherwise they're about to get just run over in the center. And you sort of a do-or-die moment. I think black needed to try b5 and hope that it works. Um, <laughs> if it doesn't, well, you know, then you die fighting. Uh, and if it, you know, if it does work, then you get counterplay and you can distract white from their intentions of playing e5. So a sample line would be, you know, takes, takes. Um, there's a lot of things that could go on here, actually. There's there's the exchange of rooks on a8, which you'd have to consider. There's also this crazy move knight takes uh, d6, trying to then follow up with e5. So for example, take, 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 and e5. It was important to distract this uh, rook from the e5 square, that's why we included the exchange of rooks first. And you regain the material uh, with this fork, but it's still a mess, I mean, it's a huge mess. And the thing is, black's up a piece, so they don't even have to move either of these pieces. I mean, they could, um, but you could also just play a move such as c4, preparing to use this c5 square for probably the bishop. And then if, you know, if takes here, then this is already supposed to be good for black. I mean, if we look at knight, knight d3 is a very typical jump hitting everything, basically. This knight's a complete uh, octopus. So that wouldn't be good for white. Better is probably to eliminate the dark square bishop. And this might actually cause some problems uh, for black. And it's definitely not a pretty position, but there's still some fighting chances, even though white should be better. Uh, if we back up after b5, yeah, it pretty much covers it. I mean, here there's knight takes d6. There's also the immediate rook takes a8, but most likely the best that white's going to be able to do here is knight takes d6 anyway. I guess bishop takes d6 is also similar, but doesn't seem as clear. All right, so rook a8 was played, which doesn't stop the threat. And then after e5, uh, black took. I mean, what else are they supposed to do? They're pretty much toast no matter what they do here, because usually if e5 happens and black doesn't have a very good response to it, uh, white's essentially winning. So after d takes e5, it is white to play and win. As a hint, I can tell you guys what happened in the game, which is not the best move. Uh, in the game, bishop takes e5 was played, and then after rook takes e5, knight takes e5, bishop f5, black was very much in the game. Uh, they're able to blockade this pawn on the d6 square, or at least that's an option. Um, so this pawn isn't actually that as dangerous as it might look, and most of the black's pieces are quite active. You can notice there's a potential intrusions on these squares that are threatened because the knight and the bishop are working well together. So yeah, this was already very unclear. Black was getting counterplay. So if we back up here, uh, it's a different move for white. So hopefully you guys can solve it. And I will see everyone tomorrow. Thanks for watching.